G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, Sunday evening here in Australia, so Sunday morning over in the States, and as I said, there's usually a bit of a sell-off on the weekends, and it has come true. Now, it doesn't look so much here, it's only like, you know, 0.1 of a percent of a retracement, but it's when we go over to here, we can see that there's, look, there's been a couple of really good gains, don't get me wrong, but we go over to here, and there's been some really... Uh, decent losses, you know, basically double digits are reasonable losses, not huge ones. As I said, I don't expect any major retracements anytime soon, although, look, it, it could come. It's something we need to keep in the back of our minds. But we can see there's been a retracement here. A lot of the things that have really pumped, you know, have, uh, you know, lost some of those gains. Now, not a whole lot, but they've still lost some. And again, the market cap is down. Now, we'll have to wait and see. Again, you know, it's it's still early Sunday uh, over in the States, so we'll have to wait and see if there's a bit more of a sell-off and if there's maybe a really big sell-off to come. You know, it's definitely possible that that happens. Look, we could see a, you know, 30 40% retracement. I just don't see it happening at the moment, and I'll go on to explain why shortly. I mean, I've explained before, but we can see gas. Gas is up. BTC dominance is down, so it was at 65%, now it's dropping down to 63%. Now we'll go back here, look, there were some gains. I mean, XRP has done really well, but this was at 48 cents, nearly 49 cents. So it has retraced some. Uh, it'll be interesting to see where it goes. Aragon's done well, empty set dollar, never even heard of it, but uh, up 21% in the last 24 hours, but it's down 14% over the last seven days. So that's just basically capturing back some of what it uh, has lost. But yeah, generally, I mean, single digit gains, pretty good, you know, a couple of double digit ones there. Double digits is when it's good. And, you know, more so when you're getting into that kind of, you know, 15 and above percent. 10% gain, don't get me wrong, no one's hating on it, but it's not anything that's kind of remarkable. But, you know, when you start doing 20, 30, you know, 40 plus percent gains in 24 hours, even over seven days. Look, that is uh, really good gains. So there's been some good gains, but again, we go there. Look, there's been some losses in the last 24 hours. So the weekend sell off, it is happening. You know, Synthetics Network down 9%, but it's still up 12% over the week. So, you know, to be expected. Now, I'm going to show you something. So here's where a Bitcoin bear whale has put up a massive sell wall. So I won't read the whole story, but basically at around $19,000, uh, there's going to be a bit of sell pressure. And we haven't been able to break that through that 19000 yet. It's been getting up around to the 18900 sort of dollar level, but Bitcoin has fallen back. We're up around 18900 and now we're ranging more down around the 18000 sort of 300 18200 And we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But we can see that there is some uh, some pressure there. It's going to take a bit of work to get through. Now, I don't think the average kind of you know retail investor who may be in yet, because there is some retail investors. There's just not a lot. It's still too early. It's not being pumped in the mainstream media that this is all going on at the moment. Otherwise, they'd be here in droves. So we're unlikely be, to be able to push this over. Uh, you know, the $19,000 mark too easily. It would take institutional money. And this is the one I was looking for. PayPal has bought 70% of all newly mined Bitcoin in the last month. Now, uh, Grayscale made a, I think they bought 10,000 Bitcoin just last week. So they're still buying and I think they will continue to buy until 20,000. I think once it reaches 20,000, I don't think they'll buy too much more Bitcoin unless, you know, more people are trying to pile into their Bitcoin fund, then obviously they will. But uh, yeah, I think Grayscale will probably start to taper off how much Bitcoin they buy once it reaches 20,000. But I think PayPal are just going to continue to buy more. So again, they bought 70% of all the Bitcoin mined last month. Square Cash App is still buying. Uh, and again, there's, you know, we heard about Sky Ridge. They're still yet to come in or maybe just about to get in now. This is what makes me think that that sell wall over here at 19,000, I don't think it's going to hold. Uh, I, I think it is just going to get bought up. I think it's not until we get to around about sort of 25,000-ish dollars. Now, it could be a little bit less or it could be a whole lot more. Again, maybe it's $35,000. I think that's, you know, probably really... 
on the higher end of the scale of not happening, but you know, possible. I think it's somewhere around there we might start to see the big boys start to play more games because they don't have as much to lose. At the moment, you know, you sell your Bitcoin, you're selling it for less than its old all time high. Why would you? You know, it'll more be the leverage traders that are going to get, uh, you know, wrecked. You know, they'll probably go uh, long at the moment, some of them, and it'll go long, and then it'll have a really steep decline again after the all time high. I, you know, it's possible that happens before, but I'm thinking more around that $25,000 mark is where we'll probably see, you know, a really big retracement because the bulls, you know, they won't care if they're, you know, they bought their Bitcoin yonks ago, yonks ago, you know, probably for $3,000, you know, some of them even for pennies uh, and things like that. So they're not going to be too worried if they sell a Bitcoin that they bought for, you know, three bucks, 10 bucks, 25 cents, whatever price they paid for it for $25,000. They really won't care. You know, that old saying, no one ever lost money taking profits. They're not going to care. And I'm sure they're not going to sell all of their Bitcoin. Uh, and they've been around long enough that they will understand that they'll just buy back later, you know, in the next bear market. And there will be a bear market. So $19,000, I don't think it's going to hold for too long. I think PayPal continue to buy more and it's only going to get bigger once PayPal start selling Bitcoin to the rest of the world because it's just their United States buyers at the moment. And PayPal is a behemoth. They are huge in the payment thing. And they're only doing the Americans at the moment. And the Americans are buying up 70% uh, of the Bitcoin. Once it goes worldwide, the, the shortage is coming. It is 100% coming. There is going to be next to no Bitcoin available in the very near future. I think it's probably going to start to happen around maybe February next year. I think PayPal, again, they will probably open it up to the world very quickly. I, I, um, you know, They said they weren't going to do any of this till next year. They opened up to America and they're making a ton of money. 70% of all the Bitcoin they're currently buying. And this is just the early American adopters. It's not all of America. All of America is yet to catch on to this. So this is just going to grow exponentially. And there is going to be very little Bitcoin available next year. And that is going to push the price to unbelievable amounts. I really can't wrap my head around what it could be. But you know, the talks of you know, $300,000, $200,000 Bitcoin are probably well within range. This has never happened before. You know, when whales were buying Bitcoin back in the day, they could buy a lot, but there was so much more still being mined that it just, you know, they couldn't really keep up with it. Now, all the institutions are going to get on board and they literally all are, you know, well, not all of them. There'll be some that just won't, but we haven't even seen the institutional FOMO yet they're going to start to get in once it gets to $25,000. They're going to go, Jesus, now we need to have some. And then again, the retail FOMO will really come later. You know, it, once the mainstream news start to push it out there, Bitcoin, it's gone from $3,800 after the coronavirus crash to $150,000. When that gets pushed out, when that's the narrative that the, name, the mainstream are being given, uh, yeah, mainstream media are pushing out to the retail investor again there's more money in the retail investors than sort of anywhere else they are really going to push it to unbelievable prices they you know they we put all our money into the millionaires and billionaires and don't get me wrong they're going to get in but they're not going to go crazy for it like the average retail investor will they'll get their positions and you know they will have a diverse portfolio and you know the average Joe who doesn't know any better, they're just going to go 150000 This thing's going to a million dollars. And look, long term, a million dollars I'm sure it could do. Short term, uh, unfortunately, they'll probably get wrecked unless they've got you know, steel running through their veins and they can make it through uh, a bear cycle where they probably lose a whole lot of money. Uh, and look, as I said the other day, if you have, if you bought cryptocurrencies in late 2017, and you held all the way through the bear market without selling and are in profit now, you can consider yourself an OG. You're not one of the full on originals who's been around, you know, for basically the last decade, but you're an OG. You've been through the full gambit. You've been through the euphoria, the mania. 
you've been through the despair and when you think it's going to zero and now you're back on the way up and probably in profit there's only a few people who would not be in profit and I think there are very few people who bought Bitcoin at these prices back in 2017 I'm not saying there wouldn't be any there would be some most of them would have sold at a loss but those few who have held and are still holding now you're an OG <laughs> that's all I've got to say all right now here is Bitcoin about to become a $1 trillion asset? I 100% think it will. The whole market cap is not far off a trillion at the moment. Well, I mean, we've still got about half ways to go, but we were there in 2017. I think it was $890 billion we got, and that was with no institutional money, really. I mean, there was a tiny bit, Pantera Capital and, you know, Grayscale, but outside of them, uh, there just, it wasn't there. The institutional FOMO, is going to happen soon it will start once they hear about Bitcoin is over twenty thousand dollars the, the institutions who will still somewhat be considered uh, early adopters they're gonna FOMO in then the shortage really starts to happen and that's when the price starts to fly through the roof then all of a sudden PayPal goes to the rest of the world we can you know we've got Bitcoin available and now it's you know selling at a hundred hundred and fifty thousand dollars and the world goes, oh my God, this was $3,000, $4,000. It's now worth $150,000. They are going to flock to it and they're going to pile even more money in. And then from there, I mean, who knows what the price will go to. But it's going to be absolutely amazing. It really will. If you haven't been in crypto very long, you can't understand how much this stuff pumps. You can put $500 into something and a month later, it could, I'm not saying this doesn't happen to all cryptocurrencies, but some, you know, low cap kind of gem that you've never heard of uh, really before and has got very little behind it could suddenly be worth $50,000. It happens. It's not all the time. But even the bigger cap coins, when it really gets into the mania, you know, they will start to double and triple in a matter of, a, you know, a couple of days to a week when it's really starting to run. You just have to watch this space. Uh, but again, once they're doing that, when they're doubling, tripling, you know, in a couple of days, that might be a good time, especially if they're already at, you know, let's say Litecoin, for instance. If Litecoin's at $400 and it, you know, is doubling and tripling every couple of days, we're at the mania peak end of it. It might be time to sell. Not financial advice, just my personal opinion. I know I didn't sell in the mania phase. I came in in the mania phase in 2017. And uh, as I've said before, I turned $800 into $4,200 in a matter of weeks. And then I watched that $4,200 turn into around about 300 and I think it might have been 330, 350, 400, somewhere around about there. I think 330, 350 sounds about right. So 4,200 turned into 300 and again, let's just round it off, $350. Now it is already back up. So I, I, I never sold. I've swapped some coins around, but that 800 that I invested in 2017 is currently worth about $2,000. So I'm already back in profit, but I had to hold through an absolutely horrible, you know, bare winter and think that it was going to zero and it was never going to recover. Uh, you know, I... I watched the market, uh, not intensely, but definitely uh, late last year, around December last year, started to pay a bit more attention. And then definitely earlier in this year, I was paying a whole lot more attention and I had some money and I was just about to get back into cryptocurrencies. And then the crash happened. And you know, this is gonna sound horrible, but it couldn't, happen, couldn't have happened at a better time because I was lucky I got into things really, really cheap. Uh, I mean, you know, not the cheapest. I didn't get into Bitcoin at 3,800. I didn't get into it at 4,000. I got a tiny bit at around 5,000, I think 400. And I mainly got into Bitcoin at more around sort of 6,400 to 7,200. That's where I bought the bulk of my Bitcoin this time. Not that I really have that much. I wish I could have had more. I'm not a rich man, but it would have been nice. But, and again, a lot of the altcoins and things that I got into, I think I was buying... Uh, Ethereum, oh God, I think I got it around $150, $180. I might have even got some at $120. Uh, I bought XRP. I was lucky I got some at $0.14. Cents. Most of it at sort of $0.16 to $0.18. Cents. 
Uh, I'm not sure if I bought some at 22 cents. I may have. I don't think I did though. I think it was 14 to 18 cents. So, you know, the returns that I've seen on those are unbelievable. Most of the coins that, uh, no, I wouldn't say most. I'd say a little bit under half. No, a third. A third of the coins that I've invested in are well over 100% uh, in profit. I do have some that are about 50 30 to 50 percent in loss though and most of them are sitting around most of the other ones are sitting around sort of you know 60 70 percent in profit so you know i can't complain I, you know i only wish i had more money to invest uh, yeah i'm not a rich man by any standards but hopefully what i did invest uh, will go a long way for me now pantera capital so they've been around for a long time they're one of the ogs in the space they have filed for a massive 134 million dollar raise so they're already uh, looking at bringing out a, well, possibly a new fund. We don't know. It could be just an extension of their third investment fund, which is dubbed Venture Fund 3, or it could be a new fund. But, you know, this space is really starting to move. And this is where the institutional money goes. They don't, you know, institutional money doesn't come in and buy it off, excuse me, the exchanges and then have to try and work out how to hold it and all the rest of it. They don't do that. They go to Grayscale, they go to Pantera and all these places like that. They are getting them to custody it and they're paying, they're paying a premium for it. I don't know exactly what, but if Bitcoin's trading at $18,000 a coin and the institutions come in, they're probably paying $24,000 a coin. There is 100% a, it could be even more, it could be way off, it could be a little bit less, but I think it's a whole lot higher. They pay an absolute premium. I, th I think I heard someone saying, that Ethereum, again, uh, they were paying twice as much for Ethereum uh, in the Ethereum trust through Grayscale and that. So, you know, again, don't quote me on that. I think I read that somewhere on Twitter, but they are paying a premium for it. So, and, and they don't care because now they don't have to worry about it. And, you know, these companies are insured and all the rest of it. So that's the easier way for the, them to do it. I wouldn't do it. I would just chew up too much of our profits but the big businesses and hedge funds and that, that's where they're going. They're going into places like this, Camp Pantera Capital, Grayscale, uh, BlackRock, you know, and all that sort of stuff. And I think BlackRock actually go through Grayscale. But again, don't quote me on that. All right, last but not least. Well, Bitcoin's fighting back. This literally was $18,280. Now we're back up to eighteen four. But I, you know, we'll have to wait and see. I think this will just stay in the red. Uh, I think we might even drop down a little bit more. We might come down and sort of tip the eighteen thousand ish dollar level, but look, we also could come down and tip, you know, thirteen thousand. Uh, sorry, seventeen thousand dollars. You know, and again, you know, a five to ten percent retracement over a weekend, not unheard of. Again, most of these uh, weekends, uh, again, you go back around about seven days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven weekend. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, I think seven. This might have been a green one. I think that was the weekend uh, retracement. Again, maybe it happened on the Saturday and then the Sunday it started to pump back. But you can literally go back through these days and a lot of these reds are on weekends. Not always. We have weekends where it just pumps straight through, but quite often we have a retracement. And that's what we got here. This time it's a Sunday retracement. Sometimes it starts Thursday night and kind of, so Thursday night, Friday morning, sometimes it's Friday, you know, Saturday or Sunday, but it generally starts around about sort of Thursday night-ish and then could happen anywhere through to Sunday slash Monday morning and then Monday morning it generally picks back up when you're in a bull market anyway. If you're in a bear market, well, it just goes down all the time. It doesn't really matter. But, you know, a bit of a retracement here is a good thing. We just need to come back and sort of test this stuff. I think the 19,000 will crack next week. Uh, I think the buying pressure is just going to be too much. PayPal will continue to buy. Square Cash App will continue to buy. I think Grayscale will continue to buy as long as it's under 20,000. I don't think Grayscale will stop buying. And look, if they still get enough institutional interest at 20,000, they'll continue to buy because they own the majority of it. They're going to know that you know they would have to sell at a loss for it to really drop below the price that uh, they're buying at. Because as soon as it starts to get back to near uh, the price that they last bought in, they'll just buy again. There'll be more money. So if they stop buying at $25,000 
and you know in a year's time Bitcoin starts to get back down to about twenty five thousand dollars they'll be buying and they'll probably be buying long before then because they will have sold and made profits they understand the cycles and how it works they've been around for a long time they will have sold on the way up and they will just be waiting for when they see a bottoming out uh, sort of period happening or they will just have price targets again they'll be much uh, similar to me maybe in that I will figure out what my low will be once I see what the peak is so let's say Bitcoin gets to you know fingers crossed 300,000 I think if Bitcoin gets to 300,000 in this cycle peak I don't think the low will go below it'll be somewhere around sort of 50 to 70 thousand dollars I think I don't think it'll go lower it might even only go down to 100,000 I mean you know from 300,000 down to a hundred thousand dollars that's still a significant drop I don't I just I'm not sure we'll ever see the 90 percent 80 percent retracements again I think the retracements will start to get smaller uh, but I also, you know, I could be wrong there because I think this is going to be a super cycle. I think Bitcoin, you know, the highs have been getting less and less as it's been maturing because this is the first time institutional money has really gotten into the market. I think it could possibly be pushed really, really high. I saw an interview, I think it was Carl the Moon and Da Vinci J, and he said he thinks Bitcoin could be pushed, Da Vinci J said this, to $1.2 million, uh, and then it has a bare retracement back down to $100,000 and stays around $100,000 for eight years. Look, you know, it's all good for us to have uh, predictions. How likely that is, I don't know, and I think even he said he doesn't think it's, it's over likely. But, but it could be something, you know, once the big institutions get in, they just try and suppress the price. They don't want it going up too much. They'll just start to manipulate the market and they are getting in now. So I think they will push it as absolutely high as they sort of can get it. And they're going to wait. They're going to, you know, again, understand that the institutional FOMO starts first. Then the early retail FOMO starts and then the mid retail FOMO starts and then the late retail FOMO starts. And it's once the late retail FOMO starts, they are going to just start to sell off bit by bit by bit by bit until it gets to, again, let's say it's a 280,000 when the late retail FOMO starts. They're probably going to work it out in their heads and say, right, yeah, I think this can be pushed to 300 and, you know, let's say $30,000. So they will push it up and as soon as it gets to around that $330,000 mark, then they're just going to start really dumping the stuff. Uh, and, you know, then it's up to other investors to try and work out uh, have they waited too long? And look, you don't have to time it exactly. If Bitcoin goes to two, uh, 330000 and then you catch it on the way down and sell it at 280000 you know, unless you bought it at 282000 then you're really going to be kicking yourself. But if you bought it for, you know, let's say even 75000 and you sold it at 280000 you're in profit. No one ever lost money taking profit. Plain and simple. You don't have to pick the exact top. Good luck trying to do that. If you if you do it, let me know. And you don't have to pick the exact bottom. You've just got to be somewhere in between there. And as long as you're making money, you're making money. <laughs> Simple as that. Or making Satoshis, whatever it is. But once we get to the cycle high, even Bitcoin is going to retrace fairly hard. You know, people new, new will come in and want to think, nah, Bitcoin won't retrace that hard. It will because the institutions are going to push this as high as they can the first time to make as much money as they can. Cash is still king. Say what you want about it. It is still king. It's going to be king for a really long time. Uh, it's not going to, well, maybe not a really long time, but it's not going to go away overnight. Uh, it is here to stay. It just might not be the cash in your hand, but it'll be the, you know, the US dollar or some kind of dollar. It's, that system's not going away anytime soon. So at some stage when Bitcoin starts to sell off, you need to make sure that you know, you've know you taken some profits so you can buy back in when it gets to the next cycle low. But anyway, that's, you know, that's my personal opinion, not financial advice. All right, this one's gone for a while, so please hit that like button down below. Please hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate that, trying to get more videos out there. Let me know if you think we're going to punch through that 19000 and even that $20,000 mark next week because PayPal and Square Cash App and even Grayscale, they're just going to continue to buy. I'd love to know your thoughts. 
I think it will push through. I don't see a big retracement. If anyone tries to do a big retracement, it's just going to get bought up by, again, PayPal and Grayscale and all sorts of people. They'll, they'll just be too much buying pressure. But I do think around about 25-ish thousand, could be less, could even be a whole lot more, maybe even pushed up to 35,000 before we start to see really big sell pressure. Again, you know, the, the OGs have been in the space for a long time and, you know, they bought Bitcoin at $3,000. They won't care if they sell it at some because they're not going to sell all. But if they sell some at $30,000, they have 10x their money. They really won't care. Again, no one has lost money taking profits. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. You can still be on that gain train. There was gains there, but a bit of a weekend pullback, completely normal. I'll see you next time.